public key token. I'm going to copy it from my clipboard. It's already copied. Oops, it's not copied yet. Maybe it got overwritten by delegate control. Okay, I'm going to go to uh, uh, the global assembly cache again. Sorry. Let's go to the global assembly cache. Delegate control trial. Copy. Public key token. Class would be the namespace dot the class name. All right. Now, when you add this empty element, it would have added a feature as well. Let's go to the feature and let's uh, modify the name. Delegate control feature, delegate control trial feature, and uh, leave the scope by default. It is scoped at web, so leave it at that. I'll come back to this a little later. It, a feature could be scoped at different uh, levels. It could be scoped at farm, site, web, a web application. For now, let's leave it at web. Next, you're going to have to add this control to the safe controls list. Uh, in order to do that, select this uh, module here and and go f go to F4 properties. Click on this epsilon. Say add. Going to have to change the namespace here. Delegate control. Go ahead and make it safe against script. That will allow you to even insert your own jQuery or JavaScript code into your control. And the type name would be custom control. Save it. And go right ahead and deploy it. All right, now let's see if if it's been deployed. I'm going to go over to the features page. To first activate that. Underscore layouts, manage features. There it is. It's already activated, which means if I go to, if I visit, and there it is. It's already rendered. It's already rendered. So if you deactivate that, that would disappear. Activate it, and it's there. So as we have just one control uh, added, targeted at that delegate control, it's getting rendered. It's given the top priority. If there were more than one delegate control targeted at the same, uh, more than one control targeted at the same delegate control, then the sequence number would come into play. Then, right now I haven't even assigned it a, a sequence number. Let's give it a sequence number of two. Okay. Now let's add another custom control. Uh, we'll just add a class. Shift Alt C again, and this time I'll give it a. Uh, this time let's call this custom control. I don't know, custom control one. Since we call the first custom control custom control, let's call this custom control one.
make this public make it inherited from the control class shift alt f10 oops some problem there with my L key on the keyboard uh, let's go right ahead and uh, override the protected onload method this dot page dot response dot right insert a line break say this two is a custom control from the DLF line break again Let's also insert a line break in my custom control. It's already there, so which is a good thing. Uh, let's go right ahead and deploy. Oops, there's one more thing to do. Let's we need to modify the elements.xml file. For the most part, this stays the same, except the class name is going to change. It's going to be control custom control one, and let's give it a higher sequence number as as we can see there are two controls now however the first control has a better ranking than the second one which means that the f the first control is going to be rendered first and then the next control is going to be rendered so this is what governs the sequence of the controls that uh, that get rendered uh, onto the page also let's also end uh, enter the control add the control to the save controls list Custom control one and say OK. Going to go right ahead and deploy it. Let's go back to the page and refresh it. Now we should see the second control, uh, the text that says this too is a custom control from the DLL appear underneath the first control since that has a lower ranking uh, than the first control. Still refreshing. So there you go. Uh, what I'd like to demonstrate uh, now is uh, I'd like to change the sequence number and see if uh, the sequence, the order in which the controls are rendered, changes. Now let's uh, let's make this a better ranking than the first uh, than the first sequence by increasing the sequence number of the first control. Go to save it, deploy it. go back and refresh the page now the second control should be rendered first that is this too is a custom control from the DLL should appear first followed by the first control that says this is a custom control from the DLL after it, after it refreshes still refreshing
So there you go. So that's basically how a delegate control works. Thank you for watching. Do leave me a comment and let me know what you think about this video and how I can improve it further. If you like the video and want me to make more of these, go ahead and click on subscribe. Lastly, if there's a topic that you'd like me to do a presentation on, do let me know and uh, I'll try and do that for you. Thanks once again. See you guys later.